pulpal pathosis, pulp degeneration, and pulp necrosis. Hello and welcome to another session of pulp pathosis. Today we'll be talking about the demise of the sole of the tooth, which is the dental pulp. As they say, an end to something is the beginning of something new. With this in mind, let us quickly recap what we have discussed so far in pulpal diseases. Pop quiz. So what do we mean by degeneration? We have heard this term most often in relation to old age, isn't it? Well, in this case too, pulp degeneration is commonly observed in older patients, but that does not mean it doesn't affect younger people. In older people, causes don't necessarily have to be related to infection or caries. Whereas in younger people, it can be due to the mild but persistent irritation of the pulp. In the early stages, it is asymptomatic, that is, the tooth doesn't show discoloration and the pulp may react normally to the neural sensibility tests. So how do we recognize pulp degeneration? Let's dive deeper to answer this question. The three types of pulp degeneration can be seen as three siblings. Calcific, atrophic, and fibrous. Calcific is the extrovert because its clinical findings are clearly observed radiographically. On the other hand, atrophic is considered to be an introvert that doesn't publicly flaunt its clinical findings. And finally, the fibrous type is more of an ambivert that may or may not show its true colours. Let's discuss these siblings, beginning with the extroverted calcific degeneration. Calcific degeneration is seen when the pulpal tissue gets replaced by calcific material, like pulp stones or denticles. These stones are usually present in the pulp chamber and can block the canal orifices. Now, do you recall the oral histology lessons about the different kinds of pulp stones, namely free, attached and embedded? Well, any of these can be present within the chamber, making it indistinguishable on a radiograph. A lot of times, pulp stones are discovered once we start with the axis cavity preparation. Usually harmless, these can pose challenges in performing root canal treatment. Now you must be wondering how we navigate our way into the canals in the presence of pulp stones. Well, for that you need to keep a lookout for our future videos. Let's learn about another interesting concept of calcific metamorphosis. Do you remember seeing radiographs of patients with complete radio opacity in their root canals? Well, such radiographs imply that there has been a complete replacement of the pulpal tissue with calcific material. On clinical examination, these patients often have a history of trauma. Such calcific degeneration is called calcific metamorphosis. As we saw, it is a pulpal response to trauma, characterized by rapid deposition of heart tissue within the canal space. The tooth is mostly asymptomatic, except discoloration may be observed. In these cases, aesthetic management using full coverage crowns or laminates can be done. In cases where symptoms are observed radiographically or clinically, endodontic intervention is necessary. Pop quiz
moving on to the next sibling, the introverted atrophic degeneration. As the name suggests, atrophy of the pulpal tissue is observed histopathologically. There is a reduction in stellate cells, leading to an increase in intercellular fluid. Clinically, it is commonly seen in older pulps, making it less sensitive. Since there is no clinical diagnosis for this condition, it is a purely histopathologic finding. Do you know that reticular atrophy and atrophic degeneration are not the same? Reticular atrophy is an artifact produced by the delay of the fixative agent in reaching the pulp and is not a pathology like atrophic degeneration. It's finally time to discuss the ambivert sibling, fibrous degeneration. It is characterized by replacing the cellular elements with fibrous connective tissue. This pulp has a characteristic leathery appearance. However, it causes no distinguishing symptoms to aid in its clinical diagnosis. This fibrous nature is appreciated when the pulp is extirpated during root canal treatment. Lastly, let's discuss necrosis of the pulp, which literally means death. Necrosis of the pulp can be partial or total and can occur as a result of inflammation or trauma. An ischemic infarction leads to a dry gangrenous necrotic pulp. So when pulp decomposition occurs, the end products are those of protein decomposition, hydrogen, sulphide, ammonia and other fatty substances. The unpleasant odour emanating from the root canal is due to the intermediate products during this necrosis. This probably takes you back to the pathology classes on liquefaction and coagulation. Moving on to the clinical presentation, let's discuss how we recognize a necrosed tooth. It is usually asymptomatic. However, the crown discoloration from dull and opaque to brownish can be the first indicator. Although you may not find anything specific to this condition on a radiograph, a diagnosis may occur incidentally. Here, partial necrosis can add to the confusion. Due to the presence of some vital nerve fibers, the teeth may respond to the neural sensibility tests, whereas a total necrosed tooth will not respond to thermal tests at all. In addition to this, some patients exhibit a history of pain for a few days, which then disappears. At other times, they may not experience pain at all while the pulp slowly gets necrosed. Therefore, a correlation of cold and electric tests, along with a history of pain in conjunction with a thorough clinical examination, should establish a correct diagnosis. The treatment of pulp necrosis is root canal treatment with a favourable prognosis if performed appropriately. Pop quiz this we come to the end of the pulp pathosis series. I hope we can now become experts in diagnosing patients with pulpal pathologies. Before we conclude, let's recap the important points. Pulp degeneration, calcific, fibrous and atrophic. Pulpal degeneration, teeth of older people due to persistent mild irritation. Necrosis of the pulp, Partial or total? We hope you had fun learning with us. <laughs>